Hi, my name's Dave Robertson and I write music under the name Reset Robot. Um, welcome to my home studio in South Sea, Portsmouth in the UK. And yeah, today I'm going to talk you through a track from my album Let Your Soul Outside, which was out on True Soul Records uh, a couple of years ago. And the track's called Guitar Man. So I started this project with this organ sound using the PX7 FM synthesizer and if I just solo it here, that was the first sound that I worked on within this track. Um, I don't use this synth very often at all, but I found something quite pleasing about that sound in particular. Didn't have any idea where it would go after that. It wasn't a preset, it's uh, just that's, I kind of, normally I start off with all my sounds just as a initial patch and then kind of noodle around from there. So yeah, that is just a kind of bog standard um, that's, sort of me just tweaking the initial patch basically um, so let me just get this back to how I normally work with it yeah there's uh so it's just a uh, basically some chords and uh a little bit of um, messing around with the the pitch the, when the notes start they kind of pitch into each other um, I don't actually really know much about this synth and I don't use it very often at all but it is the sort of basis of this track um, and then I think I added this pad sound on top which kind of comes up in the background It's got a distortion on it and that is again um, just a, basically two sawtooths, two oscillators with some chorus and then automation on the on the cutoff and a parallel channel in reason with a scream for distortion on there so I mean pretty basic stuff on that layer to be honest but I think it was it was really effective to kind of build that intensity in the track. So let's I'll talk a little bit maybe about the drums, um, seeing as there are quite a bit of them in the in the track. So yeah, the drums are fairly mellow in this, and um, they sort of consist of. Yeah, sort of standard house beat really, and I've got the kicks, two kicks, bust, um, and then the, so those are layered up. One more toppy kick, and then maybe something a bit more thuddy and mid rangey, and. So there, there isn't any processing on the on the kick bus, but there is, I believe, some processing. That kick bus then runs into a bus with all the with with all the tops percussion, and there's a a tiny bit of compression on that bus using this. It's a Mac DSP C670 compressor, and it's literally just just touching it really um, yeah not not much at all but I just find that kind of pulls it all together a little bit and 
pleases me. Whether it makes any difference at all, I don't actually know, but it, it's a bit more, it makes me feel better. So, yeah, within that Beats bus, I've got the kick bus, I've got a ride bus um, with a main ride and then a few parallels, so a reverb and a distortion on the ride as well. So the different ride elements would sound like So that's just the ride on its own. And then the reverb. And then the distorted ride. And then all three of them playing together. And this new, the parallel channel thing in Reason is, is brilliant. The way you can just, you can have as many as you want. And it's really simple to set those up. Um, so yeah, and then I've got this um, sort of techno-y, I suppose, chord kind of stab running along that pretty much runs through the whole track. And I made that using the, the Thor synthesizer again, it's quite heavily echoed so without the echo it sounds like that and I've also got a parallel channel running on there with a pulverizer distortion unit which is sort of squashy filtery distortion thing which is quite nice again this synth is um, made f I've, well yeah I guess I, I sort of made this myself so I used um, the wavetable oscillator on the Thor, um, which is really nice, and a noise oscillator as well. And then it's shaped with um, this the shaper here on the sine setting. So without the shaper, it sounds like that. And then with the shaper, sounds like that. Quite a, it's really filtered down, and then a really tight filter envelope. So low, decay, attack, sustain, etc. And that is a nice element. You know, that's kind of a nice element when the track's getting mixed in. If you're DJing the track, that sounds really nice coming into another track. Along with this um, effect stab, this sound. is quite recognisable as well and that's basically just a little synth stab in a, in a re-drum and then running into an echo unit and the Audiomatic Transformer thing which comes with Reason. So yeah I think um, I, I, I didn't really as I said before, I didn't really know where this track was going to go. I had that those two pad sounds and then the beat was fairly simple to put together. You know, it's not a sort of um, very scientific beat. There aren't many edits. It sort of just runs through quite linear. Let me just solo the, the hat and claps. I've got a few different bits layered up on those I think. Yeah, so there's just hat one, which is again really simple, just a one shot sound, no processing on that at all. I haven't changed the pitch, I haven't done anything to that, so um, very lazy on my part, but it's if it sounds good when you put it in, then I don't feel that you necessarily need to change it, but I probably could have put a bit of reverb on there if I'd wanted to, or probably should have done. Um, the clap is a layer of two claps, so yeah, just uh, I think that's a 707 clap, yeah, and 
a sort of a cut out of a house loop and then I've got the level automating up and down just to sort of catch the snare out of that loop and then I've got another sort of wider more processed sounding clap on top of that and that's two um, vengeance claps spread out in a redrum on two channels so that is the hi-hat and the clap element for that track. As the track progresses I kind of bring in this light kind of belly sounding arpeggiator um, which I'll solo and that's a combination of that's a, a couple of Thor synthesizers the first one Sounds awful, <laughs> um, but that automates up in volume, and yeah, it sounds weird on its own actually. But I guess that shows the importance of layering up sounds, and that is made yet yeah, with a Thor synthesizer with the wavetable oscillator again, and it's processed with the RV7000 reverb. Um, and a parallel with a Scream 4 distortion, which I absolutely love. I pretty much put that on every sound and uh, a chorus and there's a, a flanger on that parallel as well. Um, and then the other layers that make up that, that bell are this Glockenspiel sound, which will start playing, and that is a, a, a sample of one of my children's. It's just a kid's little Glockenspiel, but yeah, just one hit on C and then kind of keyed that in, and that's running into a um, an NN19 sampler, no parallels on that but it is quite heavily um, processed if I so that's the glockenspiel on its own I don't really I think it's probably more of a xylophone or something like that but without so that's without the processing and then with the processing quite a lot of compression on that as well maybe maybe a bit too much but it sounds nice within the layer um, so what else have I got in there there is another sound within that layer so there's the glockenspiel um, the bells sound and then there is this kind of toppy weird yeah, well, it's a, a more fuller bell sound that comes in as well. Which has got a lot more mid-range in it. But with the three together, it creates a nice atmosphere. Definitely. And uh, that third sound was also made uh, in the Thor synthesizer, wavetable oscillator again on the organ setting, and then um, quite a lot of reverb, and then really squashed with the pulverizer. So if I bypass that again. sounds pretty basic on its own but then with the reverb and the pulverizer it really sort of pushes through that 
atmos nice atmospherics and harmonics and stuff. That's without the pulverizer as well. And with. So that is the sort of arpeggiator part of the track. The device I used to create that those arps were was the standard um, yeah, the RPG eight arpeggiator and reason. It's um, and that was on a random random setting, so it's hitting all the notes randomly. And it's basically the same, pretty much the same as the the chords that I used in the PX7 synth. Yeah, so when I um, did the pre-master for it, it was slightly different to the, the version that I'd been playing before, but I, I kind of liked that. Just a bit of a surprise every time it came out. <laughs> Which, um, yeah, maybe that was a, yeah, so it would never ever be the same. Every time you'd listen to it, it would be slightly different. But whether you'd, I don't know if, there were certain parts that were noticeable for me, whether anyone else would notice those things, because they'd only hear that one version anyway, so yeah. So yeah, moving on through the track, it gets to what sounds like is gonna be just a, a, a normal breakdown, I suppose. Um, the pads kind of opened right up with the automation on the on the cutoff now, so it feels like it's really moving towards the crescendo, I suppose. Um, and then I switched the the bells to change on the arpeggiator, so I've got an automation on the octave range and on the, on the actual style of the ar arpeggiator at that point so it switches to a different kind of arrangement at that beginning part of the breakdown and then um, yeah some break beats come in two um, two break beats two uh, Dr. Octorex machines, one with a really sort of standard kind of live sounding drum, I suppose, which I did re-jig the sequence of a little bit, actually, within there, which is great about the Octorex, that you can kind of move all the slices around and everything. It's still really, really good. And then, a kind of, yeah, old school, which I didn't even realise it sounded like that, but um, they work really nicely together. And adds quite a lot of, uh, yeah, really nice sort of feel in that breakdown. And I actually sent it away, so this track got sent off to be mastered, <coughs> and the guy that mastered it sent back some feedback, and he, he sort of said, that he felt that break beat needed a little bit more bottom end in it. So I opened up the file again and then I just put a really simple um, 808 kick at the start of every bar. So if I play those three elements all together. You get a sort of nice roundness with that 808 kick drum and with regards to processing on those loops there's a distortion on the first break beat and then the second one is just completely raw and I haven't e done any EQ <laughs> on either of them which is uh, good to know um, and then, what else have I got in the breakdown? So, breakbeat comes in, pads opened up, the bells are kind of kicking off, and then I added in a really high 
um, siren using the Thor synth again. Two layers that come in, which I will solo. Which for me really sort of finishes off the, the, this section of the track. So it's, yeah, a little bit cheesy, but um, it kind of adds that little bit of extra emotion on top. And those are processed. If I can find the other one. Processed, yeah, with um, just paralleled with a reverb. And that's, again, not a preset, that's me just messing around with the analog oscillator and the wave table oscillator and uh, a little bit of pitch bend on automated as well, just at the end there. Um, and I believe there should be a second one. Yeah, that sounds dodgy, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so that's basically those sirens that come in on top of the track. And then... Um, and then, yeah, that, that is pretty much the full track. There's an atmosphere sound that runs all the way through as well, but it's so low which is basically, I think, my daughter and uh, myself and my wife eating dinner at one point that I've recorded, but I've time-stretched it, time-stretched it right out and got it really low in the mix and it's got a distortion on it and a bit of a, a low cut. <laughs> yeah, so that that's uh, adds. I don't know whether yeah, you can really hear it if you listen for it at the start of the track, but it's um, it, it's not something that you can hear later on. But I like to add those sort of things in just for I don't know, yeah, just to sort of add something interesting if people are listening on headphones or just so there's a little bit of atmosphere in the background. Um, Baseline is, again, it's really, really simple. It's, uh, I made it using the Thor synthesizer. And yeah, proper basic. It's just an analog oscillator on a sawtooth with a bit of chorus and a bit of compression. And then that's side chained off the kick drum using the, <coughs> using the dynamics on the back of the on the channel strip and that sort of corresponds to the the mix up here and that's yeah it's quite a bit of side chain on there but yeah so that's really basic that bass part there's another part actually which is this um, kind of vocal high pitched vocoded vocal which yeah, is using the BV512 vocoder. And that's the, again running into the um, Thor synthesizer with, on the phase modulation oscillator. And that's processed with the Scream 4 distortion again and the RV7000 reverb. But that's, that's, I really like that element in this track actually. I can't even remember what vocal I used. To, it's going to be okay. Yeah, so it's a reversed. <laughs> it's a reversed um, bit of one of my friend's vocals. So that's just being used as the modulator, basically. Um, yep. Yeah, so the the carrier. 
for that vocoder was the so the the modulator is the is a vocal reversed within the NNXT sampler um, and then the yeah the modulator it's going running into the vocoder and then the carrier is the the Thor synthesizer again so if I just solo those two parts. And there's a bit of uh, LFO modulation on the on the filter frequency, and without the processing, not much difference, but a bit of reverb and a bit of distortion on there. So that is the vocoder. Um, so on the mastering channel, I have got the default mastering suite that w is within reason. They, it comes with all these lovely um, patches here, f four band compression, eight band compression. Um, but I generally go for this default one, which is really, really gentle, and then just tweak it myself, basically. So, um, <coughs> you know, I don't know exactly I know the basics, but I, I just keep it simple with the mastering for DJing, for trying stuff out and sending out demos and stuff, I'll just keep it really basic. So just a tiny bit of compression. I don't put a limiter on there because I, I, yeah, I don't like how it sounds within this. Um, a little bit of low shelf, high shelf, and a low cut, everything below 30. And then, yeah, that that's, that's basically it on the mastering, so it it basically just turns it up a little bit, which is all you all I need for when I'm trying stuff out and sending demos out. And then on the sends, I've got a few sends set up, um, a reverb send, an echo, and a sidechain compressor as well for some reason. And those are just running on various bits through the, the tracks of the, the um, compressor. Goes up and down on the clap a bit and then the reverb and the echo are more on the bells and synths. But they are kind of, I'll use those for maybe automating and finishing off sections. If I want something to echo off, then I'll put it on a send. <coughs> okay, yeah, so with regards to the sequence, it is a really, it, it, it is fairly simple until it gets to that, that kind of crescendo, break beaty um, payoff at the end there. Um, I didn't. I did actually try coming back into the track after that section, but it just didn't work at all. So I just thought, right, I'm going to have to just leave it as that and then kind of just let it tail off. Um, so if I play this track, generally I play it as my last tune. It's a kind of nice finish to the night sometimes. Yeah, so if I was going to play this in the middle of a set, um, I would, I would probably just, yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, it, obviously everything's still in time anyway, so you could still come off of the back of that, that break beat, and maybe a more talented DJ could squeeze it into their set and make it sound really good. <laughs> um, but yeah, for me, this is definitely a, a, a set finisher. Um, so yeah, running through the sequence again, um, I kind of, yeah, there's a few little bits of the vocoder that come in and drop out again, and then the pad builds up and the bass comes in in this first breakdown section, and then towards the end of the break, the, the bass 
high passes out using the filters again on the uh, on the sort of um, SSL mixer. You can see there the high the bass is sort of gradually coming out towards the end of that break. That's just to sort of try and give that little bit more of more energy when it does finally drop in. Sounds nice when that bass and kick come in together there. Um, and then, yeah, I put in this um, little pause just before the, the ride comes in as well, which is coming up. And that's just like everything literally just cuts out for a split second, I think. Which is something that Josh Wink always used to do, and I always thought it sounded amazing, so I thought I'd better stick one in one of my tracks. And there it is. And the, and the ride comes in after that point as well, which I think sounds nice. Just a really basic sequence on the ride as well. Um, and that is just a, a, not a 909, processed 909, as I explained earlier. Um, yeah, everything kind of opens up, builds up towards that break beat and then the sirens come in over the top and then I think at the end I actually put in a different bell. I don't know why I did this. Ah, oh, it's another bell sample that comes in over the top. I think it's that same um, uh, xylophone bell just pitched right up. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it's really, it's a small difference, but it does give it that kind of extra little layer on top, I think, which sounds nice. And yeah, the track just comes down, filters down, everything fades off. And that is it. And it's nice to finish on that vocoder as well. Bit of reverb on the end. And then everyone goes, yeah! <laughs> or not. Thanks for listening and watching. And um, yeah, if you'd like to hear some more music from me, then you can check out my latest release on True Soul Records, The Mask of Sanity, which is out now on all good download stores.